The Habs gain some points in the tank standings as they lose to the Ducks 3-2, but Jonathan Drouin gets his first of the season and Suzuki scores. We'll be getting into that game. Plus, Lane Hudson is on record pace in the NCAA. And finally, GM Kent Hughes has some really, really good words about Denis Gurianov, so you won't want to miss this edition of Habs Digest. Hello, bonjour, ahoy, and welcome to today's news edition of Habs Digest. I'm your host, Josh Goss, alongside my co-host, Jesse Poirier. Reminder to subscribe right now. Help us get to 4,500, then 5,000 subs. 5,000 is the big goal. You guys have been subscribing like crazy recently. We really appreciate it. So if you haven't hit that button yet, hit it now. We'd love to hit 5,000 uh, in the next little while. Topic one today, Jesse. I think this will be fairly quick. Habs versus Ducks game reaction. Of course, the time zones don't really work well for us to watch these games live. But, you know, we did what we could, and we had a good look at the game. Some highlights, some extra clips that maybe aren't shown in the highlight packages. And overall, the feeling I got from this game last night is that Montreal played quite well through the first couple periods um, and ended up in the third. There was a couple quick goals that Mason McTavish one-timer Habs got into a bit of penalty trouble. Couldn't quite crawl out of it. But uh, at the end of the day, hey, the Ducks were below the Habs in the standings. Habs make up two points in the tankathon. But Jesse, the big story last night, the smile that, oh, I mean, like one of the best smiles you could have seen, Jonathan Drouin gets that goal off a Mike Matheson shot that I think hit John Gibson in the nether regions as it squeaked through, Drouin right there to put it back. How does it feel to finally see Drouin tie Linus Olmark with one goal on the season? Uh, it feels great for me, but probably even better for him to yeah. kind of get that monkey off of his back. And you can see it in that reaction. And what I really hope he just takes away from, you know, that goal from that moment is that that happened in front of the net, mm -hmm. you know, but what I really liked about Jonathan Joyne's game, to, you know, when he played against the Ducks was that he was just much more engaged all through the ice, though. You could tell he was just forechecking, just being active, you know, playing where the action is really happening, you know, so great to see him get results as uh, as a part of that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're right. And he's been having some hot stretches of hockey. There was a couple games there recently where he was probably getting down on himself. I mean, of course, the Montreal media and just people in general, like Jonathan Duane, come on, man, we know you have this potential. And there was rumors around the trade deadline. Maybe he didn't know if he was going to get moved. Kent Hughes ended up saying that the salary cap wasn't working for a lot of teams with uh, Duane specifically. But his playmaking has still been quite good this season. He's still on pace for, like, theoretically over a full season to get around 40 points. But... To see that first goal go in is amazing. And Jesse, another guy who, it was awesome to see him score last night, Nick Suzuki, as he ties his career high in goals with his 21st goal. He got 21 goals, 40 assists last year in 82 games. He has 21 goals already this year in 62 games. And that point total, 48 points in 62, you gotta imagine that'd be a lot higher with Caulfield. Um, Jesse, the fact that Suzuki's already at 21 goals... Uh, with another, you know, I don't know how many games Montreal has left to play. Maybe it is 20. As I think Suzuki might have played in every game, maybe missed one or two. But uh, with about 20 games left to play for him, he could easily push his way up the like, high 20s, maybe even 30 if he gets hot. Um, but is it impressive to you that he's getting that total while still being a pass first guy, a guy who seems almost hesitant at times to take the shot at the net? Well, for me, it's I'm not surprised because... If we just look at his statistics, he's just gotten better as an NHL player mm -hmm. every year. I think the NH, like just the eye test really shows that. Like he's basically toying with NHL goalies now on those breakaways yeah. and those shootouts. So what I think we've seen in this last couple of years is him quietly become one of the most intelligent players in all of the NHL. And I think he's just kind of kind of continue that climb up. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, like you said, the intelligence, his, his smarts on the ice, his ability to know where to be at the right times. The only thing that he is not doing as well as we might want him to do is shoot the puck. How many two-on-ones, not just last night against the Ducks, because there was a couple, well, mainly one, but we're not going to talk about it. But in the last few games where he has like a two-on-one, an odd man rush, and he looks to make that pass when really he should just fire it on the net and the defense might intercept the pass. It doesn't quite go through. There was one, I don't think it was last night. It might've been the game before against LA. I can't remember, but there was one with him and Pizzetta and um, it got intercepted and it was just, he had a wide open shot. The defender committed to the pass. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can't criticize him too much. The man has 21 goals and he's, he could be pushing 30 before the end of the year. Like a Mitch Marner type thing, right? A guy who can score goals, but is known mostly for his playmaking, especially to someone like Caulfield. Um, but Jesse, one other guy I wanted to mention is Denis Gurianov, who continued to show like flashes of just like, I don't know, I'm just amazed when I watch him play. I mean, I've seen highlights of him before. I've watched him play for Dallas, but there was a certain play in last night's game where he took it on the right wing 
and beat like three people down the entire length of the ice for a good scoring chance. Have you been as impressed with Gurionov as me? Because this guy, like, to me, he just oozes potential and he's like ready to break out at any moment. I've been really impressed and I'm sure that Martin St. Louis has as well. And isn't it so nice that we've just seen that fresh start that, you know, that the coach has offered him in, in this situation. Mm-hmm. I think that already we're just seeing great results from that, like just fitting the team so well. And again, kind of what we need is we need some shoot first kind of yeah. guys to, you know, to kind of complement our pass first kind of guys that we have as well. So I think in terms of the speed that he brings, um, you know, he's leading the team sometimes on net, you know, with shots on net. So again, bringing that shooting touch that we're looking for as well, especially with Caulfield being out, you know, just a great fit, just really happy to see. And again, that we're putting him in a position to succeed Mm -hmm. and it's working. It is. It is. And I want to see more of him on that first power play um, in that Hoffman slot, I guess, as we may want to call it right from where Mason McTavish got his one timer goal last night. I want to see, Dennis Gariano taking those one-timers because this guy's shot is a cannon. That goal against the Kings was just stunning to watch. Flying up the left wing, clapper from outside the circle. Um, it went got past Copley. So against the Ducks, I mean, we didn't see it as much, but I want to see it more because I think he'll end up being amazing. We'll get into him a bit later in the video. Um, but in the meantime, Jesse, we'll move on from this Habs-Ducks game. I want to talk about our favorite prospect, Lane Hudson. And he's on historic pace. This is not news to anyone. I mean, Lane Hudson, we've had so many news pieces about this guy. He has been Defender of the Month, Defender of the Week, uh, Offensive Player of this and that, whatever, whatever. But this one here, you're going to want to take a look at. So look at this. After a two-goal night tonight, which was last night, um, I took this, this tweet was made last night, obviously. So after a two-goal night tonight, Lane Hudson pushed himself to 41 points in 32 games played this season. That's a 1.28 point per game pace. With it, he passed Luke Hughes, 39 and 41, and Adam Fox, 40 and 35, for the most productive under-19 NCAA season by a defenseman since Brian Leach's 47 points in 37 games in 86-87. Now, I don't think they have enough games left for Hudson to maybe catch Leach's 47 points, but what I will say is Hudson's 41 and 32 is actually a higher point-per-game pace than that Brian Leach season, so... Like, he he'll, he has a shot at breaking Leach's, like, record for most points by a defenseman under 19 in NCAA history. Jesse, what else is there left to say about Lane Hudson? Like, I know people concerned about his defense, but this offensive output is just unprecedented. And you gotta think this is going to translate to the next level, right? It is. And if you think of one of the things that the Montreal Canadiens need, need the most... What is it? It's more goal scoring. Yep, it so is. I think it's something that we're in, you know, desperate need of. So I don't expect him to be up with the club next year, but definitely probably the year after that, really give him the time to develop. I think he's going to have a huge impact on this team right away. And so far as that record, he's shown, you know, with all the multiple point games that mm-hmm. he's had, he could do this. Maybe he could use it as motivation because often we see even with, like with players like Marty St. Louis is, these small guys, Caulfield, you know, always saying, oh, they're too small. They're never going to make it. Sometimes these are the ones that are the most motivated just to prove everybody wrong and do amazing things because of that. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, this guy is just, you, you watch the highlights. You watch him even play in the game and the control he has in the offensive zone is like not something you see from a defenseman very often. His ability to just like kind of make the defense do what he wants. It, it's hard to explain. It's almost like a presence he has on the ice. That's not really something you can teach, but it's something Lane Hudson has. And I really hope that translates to the next level because you're right, like this motivation to be like, he's already at a higher point per game pace than that Brian Leach season. So regardless, he's he's going to go down in the history books one way or another. Um, and let's hope that, that some of those records are going to come with the Montreal Canadiens. Final thing I want to get into before we end off this video, Jesse, um, we kind of alluded to this earlier. Kent Hughes praises Dennis Gurianov, and I guess it's a bit of praise, but it's mainly revealing what they did with Dennis Gurianov and why they went out and got him. We already made a video saying mm-hmm. the real reason why the Habs went after him, but take a look at this uh, tweet from Patrick Friolet. Um, talking about Dennis Gurianov, Kent Hughes underlines the fact that uh, he made the transaction, made the trade, with the goal of keeping Gurianov for next season. The Habs did its research... Um, about Gurianov as a player and as a person to try and understand the factors that affected his sort of offensive output, his ability in Dallas. So it, it's pretty cool that, you know, Hughes and the whole management looked at him like, okay, let's look at him as a person. Let's look at him as a player. We really like this. We understand. Maybe this is why it's not working in Dallas, but we see something in this guy. And um, 
to me, Jesse, that's almost like a breath of fresh air to hear that that's what the front office is doing with a clear goal, keep him beyond this season, get him at a good price. What do you think of this quote from Kent Hughes? Well, it's nice that they're kind of taking a multifaceted approach. Yeah. You know, and am I right in saying, Josh, that Kent Hughes hasn't missed on a trade yet as general manager of the Montreal Canadiens? Went you went woos, as people like to call him. Oh, nothing but W's. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think right? It's W's all over the place. <laughs> Exactly. The guy is too smart, you know, so you honestly, you need to trust him. The longer that he's the GM, I'm like, yeah, this is a pretty intelligent man. I'm, I'm definitely going to trust him. I think this organization is in great hands. Um, you know, I think he's got great support. Mm-hmm. We're building, um, you know, a five star, you know, class organization, you know, I think from the bottom up mm-hmm. and everything else. So it's nice to see that they're um, kind of taking a long term approach. You know, if they're really seeing something in this player. There's probably something there, and I'm definitely going to trust Kent Hughes with that. Yeah, me, me too. I mean, honestly, getting anything for Dadanov, we were so thrilled when we saw it was Denis Gurianov. Um, we thought it maybe be a fourth-round pick or something, but the fact that Gurianov has shown such great potential in just his first three games with Montreal and the fact that the Habs front office did their research into this guy to figure out why he maybe struggled in Dallas, and they figured, hey, this is a perfect spot. And he's already on the first line. Like, it, it's just such a perfect move from Kent Hughes. And even though I think Arvin Boss, who rated the Habs deadline a 6 out of 10, he said that Kent Hughes' hands were tied. He made the moves he needed to do to improve the Habs. Kent Hughes himself said, think about it, the Matheson and Doc trades, those didn't happen at the deadline. There's going to be lots of time this summer to look at more trades that Hughes is going to make. And I think there'll be some good ones. That'll do it for this news edition of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Uh, let us know what you think about this video, about the Dennis Gurianov thing, about the Habs' recent performance in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. And help us reach 5,000 subs. That's a huge goal. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate all the support. I'm Josh Goss from my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.